Hey everyone, how's it going? Five Finger Shuffle, we are back here with another video. And today what I wanna to do is talk to you about the five keys toward progression for early game players. So I was gonna show you this on my main account. Um, I have two accounts. This is the account you can see now is actually my baby account. Um, my main account, today is day 20. I started 10 days after my, I started this account 10 days after my main which means this is day 10 on my baby account. So I figured showing it to you on this account would be better just because it's a free to play account. Um, I mean, obviously if you're pay to play, you can progress a lot faster. That's not to say that you need to be pay to play to, to progress fast, which is kind of why I decided to make this video. Um, it's gonna show you guys basically what I did to get as far as I have in this only mere 10 days. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my well, I won't, even, I won't even bother showing you my main account. Um, you guys see that enough. But basically on my main account, we are on, we've already cleared Abyss 59. We're on Abyss 60. And we are, we've also finished Wyvern 10 as well. Um, and that's in only 20 days. So let's take a look at this account first and then we'll get into the top five ways that you can stop from basically committing account suicide. So taking a look at what we've accomplished so far, we are on Abyss 47. In terms of Wyvern, we're only on Hunt 7. Golem, we're on 7. And Banshee, we're on 6. Um, we haven't really pushed to do much of this stuff because we're really pushing to this point just on getting ourselves ready to do these things. Because really, we're not ready to do them anyway, so I don't want to waste too much time on that. Here's our our box. We have a six-star Isaria, a five-star Kron, a five-star Euphine, and a five-star Doris. And the only other two units we have are a four-star Cirilla and a four-star Terranor Guard that is not properly geared. I did not realize he was missing a piece of gear. Hold on. Sure. Just fill the set, make him a little faster. Um, so with only that, we were able to clear Abyss 46 and we're on Abyss 47. Um, also, we've made our first six star. We made our first six star the other day. Let's come back to here for a second. Um, you can see Isaria is six star. And already we have one, two, three, four, we have four and we're working on our fifth uh, max max four star that we can use to make our next six star. So we're 10 days in and we're getting close to being able to make our second six star already. Um, also, we haven't summoned in quite a while on this account. We've been saving up all our summons because we are doing Thursday night summons tomorrow night. And I wanted to be able to add this baby account to Thursday night summons. Uh, just so you guys can kind of watch the summons we're going to be doing. So because two of our four units that we're using have our nature, we're not going to be summoning the Bellina banner. Uh, we're going to be doing regular covenant summons on here. But we have 262 bookmarks and an ML. And this is, keep in mind, this is free to play. So... And we might even have another ML, it's gonna be close, but I don't think I can get enough gold transmit stones in time. Um, but yeah, completely free to play account. We've been saving up our crystals. The basic way, the easiest way for us to grind crystals at the beginning is we came into here, regular mode, and we three-starred all of these bases. So we went into each one of these and we three start everything. When you do, we'll use three as an example. It says 33 out of 33. Once you've three start everything, you get, first of all, for every star, you get five crystals. And when you clear the entire map, you get 50 more. And then if you come over and do that on world, which obviously we haven't done yet, we haven't even touched board three yet. Uh, but if we go to board one on world, we haven't done it here yet either, but we did enough to get the crystals here. So when you get 34 of the 48 crystals, which is 
I guess about three quarters, you'll get 100 crystals here as well. So there's tons and tons and tons of free to play crystals available. Also, if you go up in arena, all you have to do is do your arena energy and you'll get more free crystals there as well. Uh, if you come into league info, you can see we're only at bronze four, but when we hit bronze four, it ticked over and we got free 60 crystals just for getting there. Um, that's only a one-time thing. These are all one-time things all the way up. Um, and then if you finish there at the end of the week, you get the reward on the right. So lots of free crystals available. We did use a lot of those crystals to buy summons for this account. Just because we have so little versatility right now in our inventory, having only a few units. Um, so that's kind of the thought process with this account, just to kind of lead you into how we got this far um, and what our plan is moving forward. Um, I just, Kron, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I'm trying to make him good. As you can see, I put the Abyss gear on him and I'm trying to work on his, on his gear just to see if we can make him good. Uh, <laughs> I've had no success so far, but I'll let you know how that goes in another video. So let's jump into my top five keys for progression for early game players. Starting at number five is going to be the Sanctuary. So this is super, super important. The Sanctuary is one of the places where you can get a lot of free resources. So to start with, when, during the tutorial, they make you come in here and just make this building. Let's collect our reward here. You can see we got 15,000 free gold, three free gems, just for waiting. Um, so they make you do this, but they don't really tell you much about how this works or what you should upgrade or what prior, priority you should set each building in. Um, all you know is that these Breath of Orbis are super valuable and super rare. Um, you can get one from pretty much each board through scenario and you have to use them wisely to decide on what to upgrade. So I have none right now, but every time you have one, you can do one upgrade to one building in here. So keep in mind that it is they are super rare, so you don't want to try and go out of order. Doing them in some sort of order is a great idea. So let's jump over and I'm going to show you exactly how to get these things um, so that you guys know. So go to adventure. All right, so we're on world difficulty board two. I think because we've already cleared this board, it's not going to show us. So let's go to board three. So this applies to all the boards. Okay, so this board we haven't touched, right? If you come down here, see the very bottom, this one here has a picture of this little diamond down here. This is the Breath of Orbis right here. You have to clear this stage, and not only do you have to clear it, but there's a big red gate that pops up. You have to go into that gate, clear all the champs in there, and then come out the gate on the other side and finish the level. And that's how you're gonna get just one of these. And you have to do it on every board. So basically, we're, we're gonna have to come well, we haven't even gained access to this map yet, but when we do, we'll come in here. We have to clear down here, come here, come down here. This one here will have multiple options. The first time we run it, it's probably gonna send us this way here. Um, can you even see my mouse? Yeah, you can, okay, good. <laughs> it's probably gonna bring us over to the left instead of down. Um, then we'll have to run it again. We'll take the other path, which will bring us down here, and then we'll come down and over. You don't need to three-star these bases in order for that to work, but if you're trying to be efficient, I do recommend three-starring it. But gathering up these Breath of Orbis is super important. That's part of the reason why I went through normal mode and I cleared, I three-starred every base in normal mode already, partially for the crystals and partially for my own OCD because it was bothering me that some of them weren't, but also because I wanted to collect all the Breath of Orbis so that I could upgrade my buildings as fast as possible. So coming back into the sanctuary, what did we upgrade first? So first thing we did is we came in here and we opened up all three slots. So you can see on the bottom left here, it says improvement status, zero, three, zero. Honestly, you get so many stigma. These are stigma. You get so much stigma that you don't really need to upgrade the other two. If you're in a rush, I can come over here and I can just pop one of these, be like, boom, 163 stigma 
done, but I desperately needed a Mega Phantasma. So there we go, it's done. And I can start another one. I still have 1,400 more. I come in here on a daily basis and I just pop a couple of these just automatically. I'll like, if I need like three, I'll just go boom, one, two, three, and I'll take them and I'll go do what I gotta do. And I'll just let them start collecting again. But you get so many of them that you can just do that. But in the meantime, just leave these running. Um, you know, it's this is a really easy way to get three things, even if you don't get stigma or you're not even playing. Like while you're sleeping, this could be farming these things for you. And opening all three of these buildings is really important. I think this is the very first thing I did. So on both accounts, I made sure these were open so that I could get a bunch of these things rolling all at once. This is one of your only sources of fodder early game. Um, if you're free to play, you're not going to have a lot of three to three star fodder. So you're going to have troubles um, without two, without other three stars to evolve them. And this is a good source for you. The second thing I did was I moved into the high command building and you can see in the bottom left here, improvement status. All I did was one, one. Basically, I just opened up a second dispatch team. This is this seems very trivial because it's very small. Um, the first upgrade opened up being able to do hunt missions, which I can't click on these apparently uh, because I have two missions going already. But it opened up the ability to do the hunt missions, which are the ones where you can get these ancient coins. It's basically it's gold or arena points or ancient coins. I did the one with the ancient coins because those are the ones you're going to need the most in order to get other free stuff. This is going to help you, first of all, you can see the experience gained here. That's 2,000 experience every time this mission finishes. And I think they're once a half an hour and once an hour. Um, so that's a lot of XP for your team. If you want to just put your team in there that you're trying to level up and they can get some free XP and you get coins from it every time it finishes, all you have to do is come in and just click restart every time. And it costs minimal energy. Um, so I went 1-1 one, one on here. And then the next thing I did is I moved over to the steel workshop because they give you a lot of materials for crafting gear, not only in Wyvern, which is your main, once you move into later game or mid game, that's going to be your main source of materials. But early game, they do give you a bunch of things where you can craft these pieces of gear. Um, here, we'll use this one as, no, oh, no, we don't, never mind. <laughs> this is all we have now is low level materials. So we're not going to waste our gold on this. Um, but you want to be able to craft this open and you can see my improvement status here is three, three, three. So I didn't craft any gear until this was completely maxed at three, 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 because first of all, the middle one increases your chances of it being epic gear, which is super important. I mean, if you are only getting rare gear at a low level, let me show you. So it's not gear. If it's not built, your chances of epic are 3% versus 50% for rare or 35% to 12, which is huge. Like that's a huge gap. You want that, you want your highest possible chance to get that epic gear and the lowest possible chance of getting rare gear. Then the other two are the extended workshop um, reduces the cost because this crafting gear is super expensive. Uh, if it's not built, it's just normal cost. You can get up to 30% off the cost of building gear. And then same thing on this side, I max this one because it takes off 30% of the resources required. So if you want to craft a bunch of gear, you don't have, you don't need as many materials to craft more gear if you max this building. So I maxed all three of those. And now that all those buildings are set and ready to go, I started putting my remaining ones into this middle building, especially because it's a free to play account where I can get free gold and free gems just for doing nothing and it'll always be accumulating. So I've started to upgrade that and I will continue to upgrade that until it's maxed as well. All right, so that's number five. Number four is based on your inventory. So I've already mentioned to you guys that I have used some gems to buy summons. We're gonna be using them for this one summon session. And then from then on, we're gonna be saving up our gems to use them purely for refreshing energy and that's it. We have little to no units in our inventory. And the reason I did that was because I really wanted to focus on building what we have instead of 
trying to build everything. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they start playing games like this is they come in and they try and build absolutely everything. They're like, I have 20 units, I need to build all 20. And they five star 20 units, five star max 20 units, and they still have no six stars. My main account, which is on day 20, has five six stars already. And I don't have great gear on anything, but that's because I've already got those six stars out of the way. I'm working specifically on them. And now I can work on farming gear because I can farm higher level Wyvern. I can do higher level Abyss. I can do, I'm into raid now as well. Um, I'm doing things that I otherwise wouldn't be able to do three weeks into the game because I focused on a core few units instead of everybody all at once. So that's super, super, super important. Make sure you don't spread yourself too thin. If you try and gear up 20 units, you're going to have terrible gear on all of them instead of okay gear on one or two. So like I've been focusing on her. Um, she's my only six star. So she has, you know, 15 plus 11 plus 12 plus 12 plus 9 plus 12. Early game account, it's not great. It's nothing spectacular. But for a day 10 account, that's quite good. Um, let me look, let's look at her stats here really quick. So she's at 69.8% crit rate, 170 crit damage, 52% accuracy slash effectiveness, and 2,500 attack. Not bad at all for an early game unit, um, but I've really put some work into her because I wasn't busy spreading myself too thin. And maybe this Santa's hat is on somebody else and the chest piece is on somebody else because I've tried to gear so many units and now I just have trash gear on everybody. So trying to keep it in a small group of units is fantastic. And when we do do these summons for this account, I'm really going to make sure that I don't try and build too many things at once. I'm going to try and pick one more unit to add to my team, and we're going to work on that. Um, we already have our healer in Doris, and she's probably going to be our next six star because she's pretty squishy right now. She's only at 6,900 health um, because we have no way to upgrade her ring and her her necklace right now. Um, so that's our next job is upgrading those two things to give her some HP because she's super squishy and that's when we do fail things, that's why we're failing. So anyway, uh, that's a little off topic. But the second part of number four is making sure that you build teams and not units. I'm not gonna go too specific into this, but keep in mind, you don't need five nat fives the Earths, I guess four. You don't need the top four nat fives in the game to complete content. You can do it with all three stars. Your units just need to work well together. If they don't work well together, you're going to fail. Like you need a healer, you need a support, you need damage, you need a defense break. You have to take all these things into consideration when building a team. Don't just worry about building all these units if they don't go well together because it's not going to work anyway. You need to create synergy. You need to try and also create some sort of attack order. Um, like if you have a defense break, you don't want your nuker to go before your defense break. So you would want your defense break unit to be fast instead of your nuker to be fast, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to make another video about that soon, about uh, making teams over making units. But So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, that will be it for number four. Number three is gear. So... We've already sort of touched on this, but how are we going to get gear? Um, gear is more important than the units. I mean, I could take Cirilla here, and I could probably make her better than a lot of people's Nat 5s if I really wanted to gear her up and make her crazy, crazy, crazy good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that, but coming down with gear is super important and upgrading your gear. So the big thing I want to talk about is focus on getting good gear. Uh, one of the other of the top five is going to be how to get that gear. So we'll touch on that in a second. But the main thing for number three is upgrading your gear. You can see here, the reason my Azaria does quite well is because I've actually taken the time to start upgrading it. And as we go, all right, that one's maxed, bad example. I think I've already used all my upgrade runes, but as you're farming, you'll get these runes that are used for upgrading your gear. So it'll, it'll say right on it, ring, it'll say boots, it'll say whatever. All right, I have none on here, but I can still show you some, I believe. Let's go into, 
just so you guys know what it looks like in case you don't already know. All right, so this thing here, lesser boot charm. So there's lesser boot charms, there's greater boot charms. Uh, same with every other piece. Here you go for the lesser armor charm. You'll get the you can find the same thing for the greater ones. There's no examples in here. Uh, there might be in other ones, but there's some more lessers. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, basically, you want these things. You want them to upgrade your gear. It's very very expensive to upgrade gear. You don't want to be coming in here. Now, when I first started the game, I didn't even think, I didn't know anything about it. Nobody really told me. I thought there was no way to upgrade gear at all, except I thought the only way was to come in, click Enhance, and I thought you basically just had to feed your garbage gear to this in order to upgrade. I thought that was the only way. So I was going to have to spend 30,000 gold and five pieces of gear in order to get one level up on a unit. And I was like, man, this sucks. Like, this is going to take forever. I'm never going to upgrade this stuff. Now, that is the least efficient thing you can do. That's going to burn through your gold really, really fast. Because a lot of people come in. I keep using that one as an example. But let's use the hat here. So you get a lot of this, like, trash level 30 gear, right? Here, let's put it back here. You get a lot of this gear white gear that drops from running your adventure mode um, and you don't know what to do with it instead of feeding it you can see i'm getting like very little xp from this like i went up like not even like 10 percent of a level here and it cost me thirteen thousand gold so to upgrade this gear is going to take me forever to upgrade it this way and it's going to cost me all my gold um, so it's a terrible idea i did it early game because i didn't know any better so I'm telling you now, don't do that. What you got to do is, set, first of all, sell that gear. It's trash. You'll never use it. Make sure you clear the space in your inventory. All you have to do for that is go to equipment. So I clicked on the backpack up here, which I realize looks like an ice cream cake, but I promise you it's a backpack. Um, click on equipment. Click all. Click sell. Then you can sort through this stuff and pick what you want to sell. Or, so you can see I have all this white gear at the bottom. I can go auto select. I can select the parameters that I want for the gear I want to sell. Just go select. And you can see that it selected all this gear automatically at the bottom. Sell. And I only got 12,000 back, but I went up 12,000 instead of down, down 12,000. That was a hard one to spit out. So whatever you do, don't do that. Uh, sorry, sell your gear, but don't feed your trash gear to your other stuff because you're going to need that gold later on. It's super, super hard to get. Um, instead, we already talked about getting all these ancient coins. You can see I have 32 here. You get a bunch from Labyrinth as well, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But you can see we have a whole bunch of different ways to get charms for your rings here. Um, otherwise, the other stuff you can get just from farming. So keep farming you'll get more and more of these things also there's two other ways you can get more charms if you happen to get a lot of gold um, there's two other ways you can get it way number one come into adventure go to normal go to board three i believe it's board three yep three dash four right in the top of this pyramid here Now I've already, I don't think I've done this today on this account. I'm not sure, but we'll try it anyway. So it only costs two energy to go in here, but you're actually even going to get that two energy back. So this is kind of a, I know a lot of people already know this, but for newer game players, you probably don't know this. So forget her. So we're going to go, if we look at the map, it brings us over here automatically. We haven't even had to fight anybody. Next, we're just going to come up here north just a little bit. And get ready. Here he is. So the Vagrant Merchant. That's what we want to click on. And he has a bunch of stuff for sale. So you come in here. Now the gear, he's totally trolling you. Don't try and buy it. Yeah, this piece of gear looks decent. 
but 160 million gold, you're never going to have it. He's trying to rip you off. Don't worry about it. But say you needed a Malagorgo, you can get one here. You can always find these in here. So all you'd have to do is save up your regular Malagoras, save up five of them. You can come in here and trade them off for one Malagorgo. Um, it's a very rare resource. Otherwise, you can see it's got a greater armor charm here. So we're going to scoop that up. And then there's a lesser weapon charm here. So we'll buy that as well. So you can see we had over 2 million gold coming in here. Not a bad idea. Grab a couple, grab up a couple of these things. And now we can exit. And we'll get our energy back because we didn't, we didn't finish the run. But our gold stays the same. And we can come back here. And now we can upgrade a piece of gear. So let's put it into this hat. We're going to enhance. Oops. We didn't get the hat. Sorry. We got the chest piece. We're going to enhance and put it in there. And you can see it's about 50% of the upgrade. And it's 46 million gold or 46,000 gold. But it saves you from going through the same amount of gold the other way. Um, or sorry, going through more gold the other way. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of gold da down the road. So, And we actually use some of the gold from the stuff we sold in order to finance that purchase there and slowly upgrade it. So that's the first way. The second way is do the exact same thing, but in Labyrinth. So come into Lab. I don't think I have a Lab entry, so I can't show you. No, I don't, unfortunately. But board one, it's not going to let me in here, I don't think. I'm hoping I can just see the map. I don't think I can. No, there's nowhere I can see the map. But trust me on this. Come in here. The map basically is like the shape of a square when you come in. When you look at the map, it's in the top right-hand corner. You can teleport to that. Teleport there take a left, go across there, and there's another merchant there, and you can do the same thing there. Um, he'll be there every single day, and it, the shop resets every single day. So once a day, just pop in there, see what they have for sale, if you have a lot of gold, and just grab what you need and get out. Uh, make sure you don't waste your lab entry there. But you get a free lab entry every day, so you may as well jump in there and see what's for sale. Maybe you need it, maybe you don't, but at least check it out. Um, cause it's a great way to upgrade your gear for a lot cheaper than just feeding your trash gear. Now, the next thing, number two on the list, actually, sorry, number two, it's still number two on the list, but not this number two on the list is super early game is the selective summons. Now I debated putting this one in here because it's something that you probably can't fix. If you've already finished your selective summons, you can't go back and fix it, but if you haven't and you haven't got to board 110 yet, you get 10 selective summons and you get to repeat those 10 summons up to 30 times to try and get something good. Now, I ended up settling on just Isaria on this account uh, because I just wanted to do it in one shot. I rerolled and reset a bunch of times on my main account. I actually reset the account 20 times. So we did 20 of those times 30 summons before we got one we wanted to keep with. But what I recommend is getting a good nat 5 damage dealer and a good 4 star. Ideally healer. So ideally you'd get either Angelica or Akates. But if you can't get one of them, at least get a good 4 star and a good 5 star. The difference between an account that starts with just one nat 5 and nothing else and an account that starts with a nat 5 and a good nat 4 is mind-blowing like the, the person with two good units is literally twice as far ahead as a person with one good unit the only way i would recommend just picking your favorite unit is if you plan on buying summons and spending money on the game because at that point you don't really care you're going to get whatever you want anyway um and it's not really too worrisome, but you can just pick your nat five and go from there. But if you're gonna be free to play or even just spend very little, I would recommend just make sure you get two good units when you do your selective summons, because otherwise you're gonna regret it. All right, so the number one thing to help you with progression in the entire game 
is Abyss and Labyrinth. So when I first started, I didn't realize how important this stuff was. I didn't realize how easy it, the early floors were. And it was kind of, I kind of avoided it. Then when I started this account, like think about this, you get three Abyss entries a day. This account's on day 10 and I'm already at, what do we say, 47? I've cleared 46 floors in 10 days. That shouldn't even be possible, right? Because the reason being that I've been buying the extra two entries every single day. So we've been getting five entries times 10 days is 45. And I don't know how we got the 46th one. I think what it, I don't know. Maybe we missed two on the first day. I think because we started like, I don't know. I don't know how we got the four. I don't know how we got the other one. Um, I have no idea. But either way, we've done th five entries every single day. And this is why. Come in here. Look at this. You get 30 of these for floor one. Costs you nothing. If you have a nat five, you're going to want to awaken that unit, right? You get 30 of these. You get 30 of these. This is your first day. You also get 100 crystals. What is that? 100 crystals and two summons. So that's your day one. Open the game. You can do that right away. It's super simple. You can't lose. Um, there's no way you're losing in the first five, five floors. If you don't know how to get your extra entries, come into the shop, click normal, scroll down, and you can see here this satellite looking thing are your abyss entries. It only costs one leaf every single day to get two extra entries into abyss. Once you get up around floor 50, I recommend stop buying these because your leafs, first of all, are super rare. You can see we only have four of them up here. Um, they are super rare, but using them early game is gonna help your progression more than you can even imagine. I'm gonna go back and show you some of the things you can get from Abyss, just to kind of show you how important it is to be grinding that early game because it's that's the only reason that we're where we are on this account and on my main is because we've been doing five entries a day every single day and getting the rewards i just accidentally minimized my game there um all right so you first start out you want to ascend your units everybody knows this let's look at this so let's look at kron kron is four star awakened already it takes a lot of materials to awaken him. Look at this, 20 lows, 10 mids. This one, 15 lows, two mids, 10 mids, two highs, and 10 lows. All in all, that's a lot of materials, right? And you can see even here, we have 51 lows, 22 mids, and eight highs just waiting. Like we can almost do this except we don't have enough Blessing of Orbis to five-star awaken him. I think it's fire day today. It might be water day, which is gonna ruin all my fun, but, uh, oh, it is, it is frost day. All right, so let me show you this. We've only done floor one of the frost spirit altar because first of all, we don't have any water units, but we just don't need them. Um, and look how many of these we, we own, we own 45 low frost runes. That's purely because we've been doing our abyss. We've been doing our missions. We just have no, we have no need to farm this ever. We just don't need to. Let's see if they'll let me click on fire. Hmm, that's a bad example. I think I cleared those cause I needed the, the bonus, but here nature, great example. We've only done floor one of the nature boss. And if we come back to our two nature nat fives, which we got early, so you'd think we need to do that nature boss forever, right? We've done one run. She is five star awakened already. And Euphine is three star awakened. I'm not sure why she's not four star. Uh -oh. We need one more high, high essence. That's the only reason why, which we could get for free if we wanted to just quickly do those nature floors because um, they actually give you rewards just for completing them for the first time as well. But let's go back to Abyss for a second. 
I know this video is getting a little bit long, so I don't want to ramble on too much longer, but I do want you guys to see how important this is. So that was day one. Super easy. You're never going to lose those first five floors. Day two, as soon as it resets, do it again. You get two of these mega phantasmas for floor six. Super, super important. You can evolve those right away using two stars. Those give you two three stars and you can use those three stars to either level up or you can use them to evolve something to the next star level. After that, you start getting these penguins. They're basically level up fodder. They will give you a ton of XP and level them up really fast. It won't help you evolve them to the next level, but it'll get them to max level really fast. You get two fire, two water, and two nature. And then at the end of day two, you get a Molagora seed. I think you get two. Yeah, you get two Molagora seeds, which is going to, they're basically used for skill ups. So now you can start skilling up your units as well as awakening them. And you're only two days into the game. If you started close to reset, you could be like 10 hours into the game and you could already have all this stuff for free. Next day you get more stigma and you start getting these mid ones. So you get 15 mids on day three of every element. And then wrapping up with another 200 gems and 200,000 gold. This one, you get a, a silver one and a gold one, which means that that's a four star once it's awakened. And then you get more penguins to help level up. Then you get four summons. This is all, you're only day four now. Here, day five, more stigma. Now you get some high. These are the high ones for awakening. And at the end of day five, you get two more. Oh no, three more Malagora seeds. I mean, it's just crazy. Think about that. That's only five days into the game. You've already got all that stuff for free. All you have to do is do it. And people just like, oh, I'll do it later. There's no rush. But realistically, doing that stuff early actually is going to help you progress faster because you're going to already going to have all that stuff. You don't have to waste your time doing the elemental dungeons early. Instead, you can focus that on getting yourself to board 1010 and getting that free ML summon and really working on your progression because doing that, you're also leveling up your units at the same time, getting them to higher level faster, which in turn is going to help you. And finally, the second half of the number one thing you have to do is Labyrinth. Same reasons exactly. You get a whole ton of gear. You get some really good gear in here. Um, Board, this board one, Tyrell Castle in Chaos, is the most important. Yes, people want to progress to um, Great Farsh Labyrinth and Nixied Sangstum, but they're really not that important. This is where it's at, right here. This is where you're going to get your, uh, your Wyvern gear, your speed gear, your crit gear, and your hit gear. This is the stuff that you're going to need to survive early game. Um, you are going to get your attack gear here, so that's also important, but make sure you do really, really well in Tyrell Castle. Make sure you do these first five floors. Um, I can't go in to show you because I've already used all my entries, but make sure you do these, get all the gear, collect all these ancient coins because that's how you're going to get more gear. If you're stuck and you're not getting any rings and pendants, that's probably because you haven't been doing Labyrinth. Here's another dispatch mission coming in. You can see... We got 10 ancient coins and we didn't even do anything. It just cost us one energy. It was just playing itself while we were talking. So come into the shop. We got these ancient coins. You can see we have 43 of them now. You're going to get probably 200 from doing lab. So you can come in here and if you are very new, you can get these accessory chests, which will give you gear, either rings or pendants only, which is like, you can't get rings or pendants anywhere else except for the shop in here or or from Labyrinth. Um, so make sure you get this stuff. So this is for really early. Buy these as much as you can. And then once you feel like any gear you're going to get from here isn't up to your standard anymore, then you can switch and start buying these ring charms to upgrade the gear you do have. Um, this is the way to go. We'll buy one here to wrap up the video. So it only costs 40. We'll see what we get. Hopefully it's something good. So there you go. We got a level 60 amulet just from doing our uh, our hunt missions, basically for free. We got a level 60 amulet. Now, yeah, it can be a flat stat. It's probably not usable, 
but maybe it's an HP% percent amulet that I can use on my Doris or something like that. So you never know. Um, a nice little throw in also is make sure you join a guild. Joining a guild, I know there's no chat system in the game, but joining a guild is really important because you get a lot of free stuff as well. Um, once you're in a guild, you can request stuff. You can see people in our guild are just, whoa, are requesting a lot of things in here. Unfortunately, I don't have any of these or I would donate to Test Sheep, sorry. <laughs> um, but you can donate to your friends. So say you're missing one of these, you can just request it and someone from your friends list will give, or from your guild will give it to you. Also, there is a shop. So all the points you get for being in a guild, you can use to buy things, um, which includes these Terra Phantasmas which are crazy, right? They're four star max already, which means all you need is four four stars and you, you all of a sudden have a five star to make a new, a new six star. So being in a guild is gonna help you progress as well. That's my throw in for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it's so long, but there's a lot of stuff I really wanted to talk about and really help you guys out for newer game players. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Uh, join us on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash five finger, five finger shuffle. We stream every single day from five o'clock Eastern standard time until midnight. Hope you have a great night and we'll see you all soon. Bye guys.